Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Fazli Chiamat. Uh, after listening to your explanation about Akhir Zaman, I just wonder what's going to going what's going to be the impact to the countries in this region, like Malaysia and Indonesia, um, due to the what's going to impact going to be for the for the countries for especially Malaysia. And another thing, in your opinion. Another thing I want, um, another question is that uh, Malaysia is a country, what, what is our role in Malaysia, what is our responsibility uh, to prepare for the, the Akhir Zaman, like the nuclear war and so on? I understood the second question, but not the first. <laughs> what is the jazz plan for Malaysia? Yeah, yeah. They effect, they effect. Okay. Um, <coughs> actually, Malaysia is in great danger. And the loss of the two aircraft should be a wake up call. Malaysia is in great danger. Why? Because the nuclear war is around the corner. Israel is going to step out from behind the hijab because Israel has to replace the United States as a ruling state in the world. And from the time, for example, Israel launches an attack on Pakistan's nuclear plants, <laughs> guess what's going to happen in this part of the world? We had a taste of it in 1990 when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. Uh, many of you may not have been alive in 1990. Hmm? When Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, and all the Malay, all of them, <laughs> including those who were in the cabinet, all the Malay, were in support of Saddam Hussein. None were supporting Kuwait. Hmm? <coughs> because the Malay sentiment in their hearts, they could recognize who was the oppressor and who were the oppressed. Hmm? So when Israel steps out from behind the hijab and starts to launch her wars, Muslim sentiment in this part of the world is going to be inflamed. No government will be able to control, none, the Muslim people of this region, particularly in Indonesia. And if Singapore does not respond, if Singapore does nothing, then goodbye Singapore. Goodbye Singapore. Because Lee Kuan Yew, in his, um, his profound foolishness, I mean, this is not just simple foolishness, this is profound foolishness on the part of the founder of Singapore. Not to recognize that Singapore is a little, little island in a sea of Islam. And to adopt a policy of becoming little Israel I mean, that's a PhD in foolishness. That's what Singapore is, little Israel. So from the time Israel steps out from behind the hijab, there's going to be such a backlash against Singapore that no Singaporean will be able to come over to Johor with the hope of returning home alive. You're not sure? Because no government will be able to control the people. No. Well, then how is Singapore going to survive? The little island cannot be defended. No, it cannot be defended. Not possible. The, the Malaysian armed forces probably already know this. I'm not saying anything new that the only way that Singapore can possibly survive is to get more space. 
And so one can expect some rash move on the part of Singapore at the expense of either Malaysia or Indonesia, more likely Malaysia. But any such move on the part of Singapore will trigger racial war, race war in this part of the world. So you're sitting on a, <laughs> you're sitting on a gunpowder at this moment. You're sitting on gunpowder at this moment. And uh, it is eschatology, the study of eschatology that will help a government in Singapore, I mean Malaysia, and the government in Indonesia to prepare for what is to come. I don't think I should speak any more than what I've just said. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. My name is Isma Wirda. My question is actually relates to Dajjal. How actually you describe Dajjal? Is it a human like us or animal or is it a superpower like Israel? Thank you, Sheikh. Question is, is Dajjal a human being or is he an animal or what is he? How do we describe him? Were you here for the whole lecture or did you come late? <laughs> <laughs> Because I did mention, did I not? I did mention that Dajjal is going to appear in human form. Dajjal will appear in human form. When he does so, he will be a Jew. He will be a young man. He will be powerfully built. He'll have the curls of the Orthodox Jews. I did say that, did I not? That, of course, is not the full answer. But it's too complex a subject for me to go beyond that. So you should be sufficient, suffice with that, okay? I make dua that I can write my book on the Jal, where you'll get a more comprehensive answer than that.